In an odd quirk of cultural evolution, every single race in the known galaxy had, well prior to any off-world contact, independently developed the socio-mercantile concept of pub, tavern, or bar. What's more, the only civilization not to have further refined the concept to include some variation analogous to scuzzy dive bar was the Eratrians, who tended to be a rather goody foreshoes society by galactic standards. Thus, an Eratrian visitor to Thurskak's house of recreational toxins would require a polite euphemism or descriptor to adequately denominate it. Not the kind of bar you go to, the kind you end up at, would be a pretty accurate one. Not to imply the house was a wretched hive of villainy or anything of the sort. Thugs and criminals and trouble-seekers tended to be more motivated people than the general run of Thurskak's clientele and preferred livelier venues for their debauchery. Plus, Thurskak himself considered his house to be a respectable, if not actually respected, establishment. And since Thurskak was a Hruthnian, a dour bipedal chunk of white-furred muscle about five feet through each dimension, and had done enough of a stint in the galactic commerce guards to know where the hurty bits were on most sapient species and how to efficiently apply his boot to them, the rowdier elements found more convivial places to carouse. Like any bar, even a bottom-tier one on a half-dead transhipment station orbiting a stagnant colony world in a backwater sector, the house had a group of regular patrons who could be found assembled there most days. Diverse they were, but united by the common factors of having no better place to be, no better company to keep, and no more pressing business than chemically altering their brains while speaking what an Eratrian would be too polite to describe as bullshit. The Jixavan deftly snagged the mug of tart-flavoured methanol that Thurskak had slid to him, holding it in both upper hands while using a lower one to point at the Felra a few seats down. You, he said, it's good having a Felra hanging around here nowadays, really classes the place up. A spindly-limbed reptiloid, people always expected a Jixavan to have a hissing, sibilant accent. But what is life if not a sequence of shattered expectations? The Felra blushed gracefully at the compliment, because she was a Felra, and thus incapable of being anything but lovely and charming. Humans tended to describe Felra as dryad centaurs, or more informally, four-legged cleavage fairies, with most other races' descriptors, for them being similarly built around the idea of very pretty not us thing that's just enough like us to make us wonder about sex with it. Most Felra worked in public relations because, duh, this one finds himself agreeing, boomed the droll car, sitting at the shadowier end of the bar in what he, and only he, thought of as gloomy majesty, shrouded in the heavy robes no droll car was ever seen without. Charm and grace, these are the gifts the Felra bring to the galaxy. A black-gloved claw brought his goblet, filled with something that smoked and smelled of copper, up before his cowl. This one toasts the beauteous Felra. The other regulars brandished their various narcotic consumables and repeated the Drolka's sentiment, accepting only the Tarka, who was scowling at them all, and the human, who was busy sneaking salted pseudo-meat sticks off the Tarkage's plate while he was thus distracted. The Tarki drew himself up, as the toasting died away and deepened his scowl. And with those big pop eyes on a noseless orange face, nobody could scowl quite like a Tarkage. The Tark Imperium produces the most gracious of citizens with whom none can compare, he barked, because he was a staunch patriot. And the Tark Imperium had two mutually exclusive types of citizens, those who felt free to express their dissenting opinions regarding their government and society, and those who were allowed to keep breathing. But when the Felra smiled at him, even he had to add a curt. However, the inferior contributions of the Felra also deserve recognition. The Creven pulled his needly beak out of his mug and held up a talon. Query, if charm and grace are regarded as the Felra's gifts to the galaxy, what traits are the other races considered to provide? Hypothesis, seeking to answer this query will provide amusement. He regarded his mug for a moment. Statement, my mug is empty. Opinion. This is an undesirable condition. When Thurskek clumped over to give the Creven his refill, the Jixavan decided to take that as a cue of sorts. Hruthnians provide us with liquor, he guffawed, or at least our Hruthnian does. Nah, said the human, we all already had booze before our races ever met. Thurskek just sells it. Sell implies payment received, Thurskek corrected, 
to some I just distribute it. He gave a familiar, meaningful glare to the human. She just as familiarly and meaningfully ignored it. Perhaps the Hruthnian's gift is their generosity, then, chuckled the Drolkar. The human shook her head. No way. A generous soul wouldn't be so obsessively focused on money. In fact, I can't remember the last time Thurskak talked to me about anything other than that. You have a bar tab, Thurskak rumbled back, a large one. It is meant to be paid on occasionally. And I've paid on mine occasionally. Often would be preferable. When asked, would be even better. I pay my tab 100% of the times that I pay it, the human sniffed. Then to the others, see what I mean? Avarice, sheer avarice. At this, Thurskak merely growled in a resigned sort of way and trudged back to his beverage station. The Felra giggled at the sight. Perhaps the Hruthnian's great trait is stoicism in the face of the unalterable? I resent that, the human retorted. Or I would if anybody but a Felra had said it. I'm not unalterable at all. I'd love to achieve an altered state. It's the low quality of Thurskak's booze that keeps me tragically unaltered. Observation. Human. Your remarks support the Drolka's hypothesis that our Hruthnian possesses considerable generosity, said the Creven. How so? Elaboration. In spite of your words, your body remains free of Hruthnian bootprints. Call it forbearance, then, the Drolkar said. The Hruthnian's gift to our galactic community is their merciful nature. Clarification. Our conclusion is based upon a sample size of a single Hruthnian and may therefore be somewhat... Shit, the bartender completed for him, prompting a round of laughter, or its nearest equivalent from the whole group, except Thurskak himself, who hadn't intended to be funny. He never did. Being found amusing every once in a while was something he could just about tolerate, but he would never sink so low as to actually demonstrate a sense of humour on purpose. The droll car steepled his claws before his cowl. This one finds it obvious what virtue the Creven provide to us. Veracity. There are none who so clearly differentiate truth from untruth and fact from opinion as the Creven. Of course, the Tarkaj immediately objected to this. Ridiculous. Tark Imperial citizens are the galaxy's paragons of integrity. Tarkaj are a beacon of honesty and rectitude at all times. This took him long enough to say that two more pseudo-meat sticks quietly made their way from his possession to the humans, along with a gulp of nettle wine from his glass. Nettle wine was not actually intoxicating to humans, or even particularly good tasting to them, but she had principles to uphold, and a straw that might as well be put to use. So what you're saying is that you Taki really, really suck at lying, is that it? asked the Jixavan slyly. Not at all, the Taki snapped back, losing yet more snacks to his neighbor. We are the absolute masters of deceit and duplicity. While simultaneously being paragons of integrity? the Drolkar asked. Yes. How? Fay scoffed the Tarkish, waving that off. Any logical irreconcilability in the Tark Imperium's greatness is for lesser beings to deal with. His look of smug victory over the barbarous forces of basic logic fell into one of puzzlement as he blinked at his almost empty plate. Yeah, I'm going to have to dispute that one too, drawled the human mostly to the Drolka. Gift of veracity, not so much. You dispute the truthfulness of the Creven? It was hard to tell if the Drolka was intrigued or appalled. Being shrouded in those robes didn't help, no visual cues. That was actually a large part of why Drolkar wore the bulky things. Secretive bastards, those Drolka. Actually, I'm disputing excessive truthfulness being a virtue. You would, wouldn't you? Only a Felra could say that and make it sound like an endearment. The Jixavan snorted into his mug. Yeah, you're going to have to argue that one pretty hard, human. Indeed, this one awaits the human's justification with philosophical dread and low expectations. If the human was phased by those responses, it didn't show. Creven detective dramas, she declared, are the most boring things ever put on 3V. Ah, this one's expectations were clearly not low enough. Seriously, the human continued, Beakface McCreven gets stabbed, then you have an hour of Detective Feathercrotch asking, Query, did you kill that guy? To people who just say, Statement, no, until he finally gets to the one guy who says, Statement, yes, instead. 
Roll credits. The Drolka stuck his claws into his cowl and appeared to massage something. So, because Creven 3V programs are admittedly terrible, the Creven snapped a glare at the Drolka. Offended interjection, hey, you surmise from there that honesty is not a virtue. No, I said excessive honesty is the problem. Like, suppose I was trying to hide from some violent lunatic or serial killer or debt collector or something, and the crazy murdering creditor guy came in here wanting to know where I was. The moment he asks the Creven, BAM! Creven honesty just got me killed. That's true, mused the Jigsavan, but I'm not sure that's a good example. Because even if the Creven wasn't here, I'm pretty sure I'd rat you out. I'd totally tell on you, agreed the Felra. This one would also gladly inform on you, human. The Tarkadi had booted up his communicator. Does this psychopathic collection agent have a name and contact number? He asked. The human sighed and rolled her eyes. He's hypothetical. Oh, said the Felra. Knowing you, I assumed he'd be Hruthnian. Anyway, Creven or not, that still demonstrates my point about excessive honesty being a problem. The look the Jixavan sent her could be described as sceptical, much like one could describe a fusion warhead as a thingy that goes bang. Er, uh, I think it actually demonstrates something more like, if you expect people to lie for you, maybe don't irritate them quite so much. Wise words, this one's friend. The Drolkar raised his goblet in approval, then downed most of its contents in one long slurp. Is that perchance a Jixavan proverb? Because if it is not, it should be. The human arched an eyebrow at the Drolkar. A pseudo-meat stick paused halfway to her mouth. Wow, that's rude, even for you. She jerked a thumb at the Jixavan. You should apologize to him. I'm pretty sure you're not as racist as that made you sound, and you should have a chance to retract that and apologize. Retract what? The Drolkar rumbled, offended. This one has said nothing that bears retraction. The human shook her head. Ooh, okay. I guess you are that racist. Maybe I never noticed before because your bigotry is mostly against Jixavans. This one has no such prejudice. How dare you assert such a thing? Hey, I gave you a chance to apologize for bad-mouthing the whole Jixavan species, but you're doubling down and standing by it. The human shrugged. That's all on you, big guy. Hang on, said the Jixavan, pointing unsteadily at the Drolka. I missed something. Just what did you say about us Jixies? This one said nothing to warrant offense from any Jixovan. Maybe let me judge that, Drolkar. The Jixavan flexed the talons on his lower hands. Tell me what you said. He said that Jixavans were so irritating, they needed a proverb to remind themselves not to be. The human helpfully interpreted. The Drolkar began sputtering like a Tarkuj groundcar engine, but before he could make any coherent reply, the human headed him off by asking the Creven, Was that not what our Drolkar friend said? Statement, that is one valid interpretation of the Drolkar's words, the Creven replied, crest feathers twitching unhappily. Opinion, other interpretations. The human cut him off with a wave of her hand. Let's not muddy the issue with opinions. The facts are what they are. The incensed Jixavan attempted to clamber off his seat, a task he would have performed much more capably a methanol or two ago, muttering implausible and semi-coherent threats, while the Drolkar tried to mount a defense. That was not what this one said. The human is lying. If I'm lying, the Creven is lying, and we all know Creven don't lie. Before things could get too ugly, a white-furred arm the size of most species' torsos grabbed the Jixavan and pushed him back into his seat. Settle down, growled Thurskak. The human is just playing games with you. To the human herself, he added, if your shit-stirring starts a fight, I'm holding you responsible for damage. If you think you must, just put it on my tab, she generously replied. It was not a cultural trait of Ruthnians to express disdain by rolling their eyes, but Thurskak did so anyway, because sometimes you've just got to... Sensing the tension in the room and wanting to, if not dispel, at least redistribute it a bit, the Felra said, So, back on topic, is that what the humans bring to the galaxy? Dissension. Call it shit-stirring, Thurskak insisted. Dissension is too dignified. The human sent back one of the most infuriating of her extensive repertoire of smart-ass smirks. The Hrutnian pot intends to badmouth my kettle, huh? Fortunately, 
I'm not as quick as certain others to take offence. As opposed to giving it, snapped the Drolka. Agreed, said the Tarka, who was beginning to figure out why his snack orders seemed less filling of late. You know, we humans have a saying that a person can only be insulted by their equal or superior. With that in mind, she turned and bowed grandly to the Tarko. I hereby apologize for all the insults I've given you, but don't worry about returning the favor. There's no need. Her smirk stayed in place, even as she popped a last bit of pseudo-meat stick into her mouth. The Tarkuji's face turned the color of rotted pumpkins, and the noises he made bore only a vague resemblance to any civilized language. Call it mischievousness instead of shit-stirring, said the Jixavan, who always ready to enjoy watching the Tarkuj suffer, even if it meant siding with the human a little bit. Mischief is the human's gift to the galaxy. If the definition encompasses petty theft, I agree, the Tarkuj snapped. Angry as he was, he might have assaulted the human, except that the Tark Imperium considered themselves masters of strategy and strategy, usually dictated that Tarki not initiate hostilities against anyone who could conceivably fight back. It was said that a Tark Imperial Marine wouldn't swat flies without five-to-one numerical superiority, defensible fallback positions, and medevac lifters on standby. On the other hand, those flies hadn't stolen most of a plate of overpriced bar snacks. Now nah, you're all wrong, the human said dismissively. The human gift to the rest of the galaxy is hope. We humans are spreaders of hope. In a sudden breakthrough in the field of sociolinguistic acoustics, the denizens of Thurskak's House of Recreational Toxins somehow managed to turn a brief moment of total silence into a polycultural expression of heartfelt derision. Two things, said the Felra when the moment had passed. First, that's cheesy, and second, just no. The Drolkar rubbed at something in the depths of his cowl. The only hope the human offers this one is the hope that she might shut up. The human smirk widened into the kind of smile a used ground car dealer gives to a liberal arts major. Ah, the Drolka is starting to get it. The second bout of derisive silence failed to live up the standards set by the first, but it wasn't for lack of trying. Don't believe me, every one of you here has your hopes pinned on me. The human's face radiated smug bullshit like a lawyer-fueled reactor. Every time I come in here... The Drolkar hopes, vainly, that he will be able to out-debate me, that I won't crush his pitiful assertions. Your assumptions make this one's brain hurt. Please stop. See? Crushed. And the Creven is always hoping that maybe, maybe, I'll use the sort of logic his straight-laced brain can follow, so he can fully comprehend my thoughts for once. The Creven's feathers stirred resignedly. Opinion. Possessing the ability to understand your thought process should be grounds for incarceration. Then there's the Tarkuj, holding on to his hope that one glorious day, the amount of food he pays for will match the amount he actually gets to eat. The Tarkuj, expert scowler that he was, aimed a fairly impressive one at her. That is the first thing you have said that I agree with, yet somehow it only makes me hate you more. Amazing. The Felra, of course, hopes that her charms will eventually lure me into her arms for a night of sinful ecstasy. There is a name for what you just said, the Felra explained. It's called projection. And, of course, good old Thurskak's hope is the most obvious. You can see it in the way his eyes light up every time I come in. That one giddy moment of hope that this might be the day I settle up my tab. And when it invariably proves not to be, does he give in to despair? No because there's always tomorrow to look forward to. Thurskak just stared at her, stared so intently that it could have qualified as second-degree ocular battery on some of the more wimpified galactic core worlds. And after a pause so heavy and awkward that even the human began to feel a little uncomfortable, he said in the kind of voice usually associated with confessions resulting from enhanced interrogations, your tab is ridiculous at this point, ridiculous, but if I just cut you off, You'll hop an outbound ship, and I'll never get paid. If I ban you, or beat you, you'll hop that ship. Your tab, I could retire on it. People murder each other over that much money, but if I do that, I'll never see it, but... If I keep letting you come around, maybe... He sagged suddenly, holding himself up with the edge of the bar. I hate 
my life. The human took this as an endorsement, because of course she did. See, the man subsisting on the hope I provide. I think he's more a victim of it, the Felra said, wide-eyed and tail-twitching. Clarification, our host is actually a victim of the sunk costs fallacy, offered the Creven. The Jixavan waved an upper hand for the human's attention. Hey, you leaving me out? What's my big human-shaped hope supposed to be? The human shrugged. Eh, you just hope to see somebody punch me in the face one of these days. The Jixavan considered this for a moment. That's true. That's very true. He raised his mug to the room. Here's hoping. <laughs>